So, yet another review of a 1970s dystopian sci-fi film. We're on a roll now, and this one, just like Soylent Green, also stars Charlton Heston. The Omega Man was released in 1971 and would be described more as a post-apocalyptic action-adventure sci-fi film. It's based on the 1954 book I Am Legend by Richard Matheson. There have been three film versions of the book. The first one was released in 1964, which was called The Last Man on Earth. The second one is The Omega Man. And then, of course, there was the 2007 Will Smith film, I Am Legend, obviously going back to the original title of the novel. But I think of the three film adaptations of the book, The Omega Man is probably the most iconic. You're no doubt familiar with the story. The Sino-Soviet War goes full bio-warfare, and most of the population of America is wiped out, although a small percentage have become nocturnal mutants, a very different interpretation to the mindless zombies of the 2007 version. These mutants aren't really zombies at all, though they physically resemble same. When a person succumbs to the condition, they begin to act irrationally, their skin colour turns pale, their hair and eyes turn white, and then they join a cult called The Family run by a former television news presenter named Jonathan Matthias, played by Anthony Zerby, who, by the way, in 1998 would play Admiral Dougherty in Star Trek Insurrection, just as an FYI. These hideous mutants are, in fact, intelligent enough, though they are insane, violent, and they see humanity as something to be surpassed. Charlton Heston plays Robert Neville, a scientist who developed a cure for the plague. He's the only one who took the cure before most people died, so he's immune now. He roams the empty streets of Los Angeles, scavenging for supplies and keeping himself somewhat sane by imagining he's not alone, talking to himself and pretending there's other people in shops and in his apartment. When the sun goes down, he is regularly attacked by the mutants, who he defends against at night, and during the day, he tries to locate their nest. He eventually finds Rosalind Cash's character, Lisa, and she saves him when he's captured by the family. She leads him to a small settlement of other human survivors, including Dutch and her brother Richie, who is slowly succumbing to the disease himself. Neville and Lisa develop a romantic relationship. Later, Neville synthesizes a cure from his own blood, and the boy is saved. But he's later killed by the family, and then Lisa also succumbs. Matthias kills Neville in the end, but not before Neville gives Dutch the cure. Now, that's a very quick and general synopsis of the plot, and I certainly am not doing the film much justice, I admit that. But I wanted to talk about this film in the context of this being the third dystopian sci-fi film in a row that I've reviewed from the 1970s. And it's worth discussing this era in filmmaking and why there seemed to be a bunch of sci-fi films like this at the time. I have reviewed, as you know, Logan's Run from 1976, Soylent Green from 1973, and we're now discussing The Omega Man from 1971. Incidentally, it wasn't actually my intention to review these films in that order, it just sort of worked out that way. Now, from the 1970s to the early 80s, say up to Blade Runner in 1982 and the first Terminator film in 1984, there were a lot of dystopian and or post-apocalyptic and dark sci-fi films released around then. But after the colourful optimism and utopianism of the 1960s, complete with its hippie flower power counterculture movement and talk of standing up to the man and challenging authority, there appeared to be a recognisable shift in how science fiction cinema depicted the future. Suddenly there was an emergence of an increasingly nihilistic and hopeless worldview as brutal totalitarian and technocratic systems were depicted in many films, and this became a trend. Gone was the vision of the optimistic utopia for mankind. Instead, we got Planet of the Apes, Silent Running, Logan's Run, Soylent Green, Rollerball, A Clockwork Orange, The Omega Man, THX 1138, and more. It's worth noting that in 1972, the book The Limits to Growth was published, and the 70s marked a period of increasing environmental awareness. Environmental theories emerged about man's potential destructive impact on the ecosystems of the planet. And so films like Logan's Run and Soylent Green both contain ideas related to this. 
In Logan's run, humanity lives in a domed city and the population is tightly controlled in order to keep it in harmony with nature. In Soylent Green, overpopulation has led to a collapse of the food system and the air is badly polluted. In both scenarios, humanity lives under totalitarianism and the message seems to be man is bad for planet Earth and will eventually destroy it. In The Omega Man, the plot is obviously very different. It has nothing to do with environmentalism, but there is a somewhat similar message about the destructive nature of our species in that mankind is responsible for destroying itself by its own hand. Now, I personally don't agree with these theories, but I'm merely pointing out the common themes in these films and the background to the era in which they gained prominence. The sense of nihilism and disillusionment in these 70s films may also have been a response to the fact that the Vietnam War was still ongoing and that the peace and love hippie flower power movement was unable to serve as a sufficient counter-narrative in order to stop it. When it comes to futuristic dystopian sci-fi films and TV shows, which continue to this day of course, it's hard to know how much of these are predictive programming designed to prepare the public for possible future outcomes, or perhaps they are just warnings, or simply thought exercises designed to stir the imagination, or even to shock and terrify the audience purely for entertainment purposes, much like a horror film excites our primal fears. I'll let you guys decide in the comments below. The Omega Man was released right at the beginning of an explosion in the genre of the dystopian sci-fi movie in the 1970s, and explores the dangers of humanity's relentless march of scientific and technological advancement to the point where our arrogance and recklessness creates a biological weapon that annihilates most of the population. Charlton Heston is fantastic in the role of Neville, embodying a believable balance between action hero and a scientist and intellectual desperate to discover a solution to the plague. Both he and Rosalind Cash have excellent on-screen chemistry, which just makes her tragic but inevitable transformation into a mutant all the more painful. And Rosalind Cash is wonderful in her role, tough and yet at times vulnerable and endearing. Anthony Zerby is also extremely menacing as Matthias, his madness and irrationality providing a perfect foil to the scientific cerebral nature and measured reasoning of Neville. The Omega Man is a great watch, and I don't want to compare it to 2007's I Am Legend and get into a debate over which film is better, because I think they're both enjoyable movies in their own right. If you're looking for a sci-fi classic, check this out. Finally guys, if you'd like to support my work here on The Dave Cullen Show, please head on over to Subscribestar. The link is in the description box below, and for as little as $1 a month, you can help to support the channel. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.